If you had 25 minutes with the best catching coach in the world, what would you ask him? Well, my name is Coach Bougie, the founder of Catching Made Simple, and I got to spend about 25 minutes with who I believe is the best catching coach in the world, Bobby Wilson. Why is he the best catching coach in the world? Well, he's coached gold glovers like Jonah Heim and Jose Trevino, arguably two of the best catchers in the MLB. And when you've helped those guys get to the next level, you know that you got something special going on. So here's the seven things that I learned from the best catching coach in the world. And make sure to stay tuned for the last one because number seven is his advice to younger catchers. So the first thing that we talked about is how the game is so much different than when he was playing. Since I've talked with him before, he allowed us to come down onto the field during batting practice. It was really cool, we got to watch everyone take BP. The surprising thing was, was that only about five people took BP. So he said workload management is one of the things that has changed so drastically. A lot of people don't even hit on the field anymore, they'll just hit in the cages and then come up and take their ABs in the game. While this is great for pro players, younger players just need more reps, so I wouldn't be too concerned with your workload management if you're younger. The second thing I learned is how he likes to break gloves in. He was breaking in a glove for one of the catchers on the Rangers, and he said that he used to actually throw the glove up and hit it with a fungo just so that he could break up all the fibers. Part of the reason that he would do that is because a catcher's glove is so stiff and you just need to break up the fibers of the glove. And a good way to do that is apparently by hitting it with a fungo. He also had glove oil on it and they said never ever put it in the microwave. It ruins the leather. The third thing that I learned is that we are in a new era of players. Almost all of the players in the big leagues are visual learners not feel learners. He played in the big leagues under Mike Sosha, one of the greatest managers and catchers in the game. And back when he was playing, most of the coaching was done through feel. What that means is when they would go to block, they would give feel cues of feel this knee go down, feel like this is happening, feel this. What do you feel in your body? But he said now as he coaches most of these players, they're on their phones, they're watching videos, and they're visual learners rather than feel learners. So instead of giving feel cues, he gives visual cues on video. He said we're in an era of show me using video and that oftentimes they're even making in-game adjustments based off of video. So if for example a catcher's set up in a certain stance on a slider from a right-handed pitcher and he's missing this pitch, they'll take the video, pull over the catcher in the middle of the game and say hey next time you call a slider over here make sure that our body's positioned like this and not like this because then it's going to allow you to not have to swing all the way around to block that ball. You can do it easier, you can do it better like this. Really, really cool. The fourth thing that I learned is that what he's working on with his catchers is almost all body positioning. And that's not just stances, but it's going a layer deeper than stances because we're taking into account what type of pitcher it is, what type of pitch he's throwing, where he's likely to miss, and where we need to be set up based on our strengths as a catcher and where that ball is going to be so that we can catch it back to the zone. One example of this that he said was that if you know that there's a high chance of there being a lateral block, then we should, in our single knee stance, open up our foot so that we can press our knee down if we're in a single knee so that we can better go to the side to block. If there's a higher chance that it's going to be straight in front of us, then you can stay a little bit more square. But if you know that that pitch is going to be in the dirt and it's likely going to be that way, then open up your stance and get ready so that you don't have to do that as the ball is coming because it's going to be too slow. The fifth thing that I learned is that players need to know how much you care before they care how much you know. This is a common one, but it is oftentimes overlooked. And sometimes the simplest things are oftentimes the hardest things to do. And so what Bobby's done is he's created a menu of everything, every competency that a catcher would need to know. And he goes to the catchers and connects with them first and then goes through and asks them what they like to do and lets them choose. Because he's found that if he comes in too strong, then sometimes the players give pushback. And this is not just a baseball thing or a catching thing. This is just true in life. If you create the structure and allow the other person to choose what they want, it almost always goes better because they have ownership of it. For example, one of the things that he's talked about in that menu is what type of glove load do we have? I call this going down to a triple threat, but here are a few of the options that he talked about. A corkscrew, a thumb, a pinky, and a sharp load where you go fast. So those are some of the different types of glove loads and then he lets the player choose what they wanna do. The cool thing is that they have data on all of this. So if they find that the catcher receives a low pitch worse with their pinky down going like that, 
compared to if they corkscrew and keep the pocket square. They have the actual data to compare on that low pitch, do they get more strikes or less strikes with a certain type of glove load? And when I asked how they get that data, he actually goes through and tallies all the pitches himself throughout the entire farm system, which is pretty crazy. The sixth thing that I learned from him is that coaching elite players is different than coaching beginning players. He has some daughters and they're learning to play softball. And as he's learning to coach them, he's realizing that to simplify it in a way that a youth player can get it is very different than how you would teach an elite athlete. Because these elite athletes are so talented, they're so skilled that you just need to tell them what to do. Then they do it. They figure it out. But oftentimes with the younger athletes, if they aren't moving correctly and you're used to coaching elite athletes, it can be tough because you're like, well, that doesn't look right. And sometimes it's challenging. That's one of the reasons that I love coaching younger kids because it reminds me of when I transitioned from an infielder to catcher and that beginning phase was really tough, which is part of the reason I love teaching it. And finally, number seven, this is his advice to younger catchers. He split up the advice to two groups of people. First, if you're an older high school player, Here's what he says to you. Don't be so focused on going D1. Go somewhere where you can play. You're gonna grow more if you're playing and getting at bats rather than being at a fancy D1 school but sitting on the bench. If you're good, then they'll find you. And to the 12 year old, here's what he said. Play other sports and have fun. Don't get burned out and play 100 games a year. You don't need to play that much when you're young. Build skill, have fun, and make it something that you love doing. So those are the seven things that I learned from my short conversation with who I believe is the best catching coach in the world. Bobby, thanks for having me out. Thanks for the hat. And thanks for sharing all the wisdom that you did so now I can share it with everyone else. If you like catching and you wanna get better, you may wanna check out the seven day stance challenge. It's a free seven day email course that teaches you the foundations of how to get into a good catching stance, plus a few mobility drills that you can do to open up your hips. And it does it all in less than five minutes a day. So if you want that, go to catchingmadesimple.com slash stance. And if you like this video, then you might like this video right up here where I did an interview with MLB pitcher Derek Holland about what he likes to look for in catchers. So take a look at that too. My name's Coach Bougie. I'll catch you later.